welcome to All Things Policy, a daily podcast supported by Pragati, a flagship media initiative of the Takshashila Institution. We're a bunch of policy nerds based in Bengaluru, and we like to bring a fresh perspective to Indian affairs and an Indian perspective to global affairs. So grab a cup of coffee, sit back, and join us for today's chat. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another exciting episode of All Things Policy. I'm Rowan Pai, and I'm your host for today. I work as an assistant program manager at Takshila, and today we have Mehak Mankani joining us for an episode. Hi, Mehak. Hi, Rowan. How are you? I'm good. So, Mehak's here to talk about telemedicine in India today. But before we jump into that, I'd just like to bring to your attention that the applications for Takshila's one-year postgraduate program in public policy are now open. The PGP is a 48-week multidisciplinary specialized program designed for students who wish to gain a deeper understanding of both the theoretical and empirical approach to public policy. The course choices available are wide and deep, providing a holistic learning experience to students. It is completely online and the last day to apply is 14th January. So make sure you apply soon. All right, so coming back to the episode, Today, we'll be discussing the need to make telemedicine a tool for transforming healthcare in the country. We will majorly be talking about the need for India to move towards telemedicine and why the acceptance and growth of telemedicine in India is slow or in developing nations actually is slow and how we can change this trajectory. So to begin with, Mehak, what exactly is telemedicine and what is the historical perspective to it? Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Rowan. To answer your question, if we have to define, a telemedicine is basically nothing but the exchange of medical information from one location to another location using any kind of electronic communication. And the result is the improvement of health status of a particular patient. So any kind of communication between a medical professional and a patient who are not in proximity to each other in the physical space using any kind of electronic communication is known as telemedicine and it has its multiple applications and it can be used for different services and now it of course includes the wireless tools there is of course there's also email because a lot of people just think that telecommunication or telehealth might just be a video call or probably a telephonic conversation but it's really not it's much more beyond that even like emails, any kind of apps and there's an exchange of messages between the doctor or between the nurse and the patient is also considered as one of the methods for telecommunications technology. And of course, it has improved the capacity of healthcare providers across the globe to take care of people without being physically present at one place in time. And further, it has proved its worth over time. Of course, it's been decades since its inception, but it's been here for quite some time and it proved its worth. And to answer your second question about the historical context, to uh, put things into place, we can just say that in 1940s, I think in Pennsylvania, radiology images were first sent approximately 20 miles between two towns and via telephone line. And that's actually counted as uh, the first example of an electronic medical record transfer. So maybe we can say that it started in 1940. And of course, later, a a Canadian doctor picked up on it and constructed technology around it that was used in and around for a very long period of time, particularly in Montreal. And as these practices became more widespread and so did, of course, motion pictures, there was advancement in the technology. And... uh, Serious plans were taken to to consideration to build on it. And the first people to actually use uh, video communication for medical purposes were at these doctors at a University of Nebraska in 1959. And the university somehow managed to establish a two-way television setup to transmit information of the medical students in and around the campus. And to transfer it to another state hospital and that's how the first video consultations were put into place and uh, then telemedicine became popular also in rural areas and all, all of this was happening in the US so basically it said that in 1970s somehow the in the rural areas where still the populations had limited healthcare access people were now able to reach to specialists uh, from different cities afar And in 1960s and 1970s, the Public Health Department, NASA, Department of Defense, U.S. Health and Human Services Department 
all of them actually started to invest serious time and money to build research in telemedicine. And uh, the new wave of telemedicine is just much more beyond that videos or telephonic conversations. And uh, if we put things in context in an Indian perspective, we can say that the activities related to telemedicine actually started in 1999. That's like that's when people actually started taking it seriously. And uh, through the gov- because the government realized its importance in probably 2000 and 2001, ISRO came into picture. They somehow deployed the First Nation SATCOM-based telemedicine network in 2001. And since then, there have been a lot of improvements that some kind of money has been put in, some kinds of efforts have been put in. And since then, it's been growing in India. Wow, okay. I really didn't know that telemedicine actually had such a rich history. Yeah, and now that you've given us such interesting global trivia about telemedicine, let's zoom in and talk about India. Why do you think India needs telemedicine now? So yeah, like, of course, access to healthcare in India is very different than a lot of other countries. Like, of course, we have issues with geographical accessibility. We have issues with availability, with pricing, acceptability of medicine and treatments in the first place. Like we've been through two years of the pandemic and people are still not talking about health, right? Or people are still uh, using home-based treatments for medicine. So in this scenario, and of course, then there are populations like there's there are women, there are children, there are elderly, and then there are these physically challenged people who cannot visit hospitals every day. And all of these hurdles have become increasingly troublesome, right? And then so you suddenly have this pandemic. So all of these things come into play. And so right now, it's the best time for India to utilize and uh, utilize these telemedicine solutions to broaden the population's basic access and ease to, to the services and like to probably improve the health outcomes of the population at large. And that's been our goal for a long period of time, but we haven't been able to do so. But there are a lot of reasons why India should move towards telemedicine and telehealth. And now it's the time. So one is basically we know that we do not have enough infrastructure first place and then we also do not have enough doctors or probably enough medical professionals right so and because of all of this there is frequent overcrowding at government hospitals which somehow force people to either not visit them or just visit private hospitals but we know that like private hospitals might not be accessible because of economic reasons for a lot of people. So they do not prefer going to these government hospitals put up in place for the people. So I don't know, but like if I if I've spoken in one of the previous podcasts and I've repeated this multiple times, there have been research reports that say that in India on a daily basis, 10,000 people visit AIMS OPDs. And that's, that's a huge number. We do not have enough rooms we do not have enough doctors to treat the people so by requiring the people to speak to a distant doctor through video chats or through messages or through emails or through telephonic conversation telemedicine and telehealth solutions can reduce crowding in emergency situations right there's always not a need to visit the doctor in person and overcrowd the hospital so i think telemedicine and solutions can come into play here apart from this we're still getting out of the covid 19 pandemic and we know the environment that it created two years back right so in such situations hospitals are actually nothing less than a high risk environment for anybody and even so far because there's of course an increasing spread of infection right so like especially for more vulnerable populations there are always people with lower immunities there are always Children, they're always elderly who are always more vulnerable to such situations. So I think telemedicine can again play an important role here in such situations where hospitals are high risk environments. Patients uh, can actually just have it easy access to their doctors, specialists or their caregivers. And this provides not only chances of infection to them, but also to the people around them. So, to probably through telemedicine, there's a chance of delivery of new level of treatment that we haven't actually, we haven't actually seen and there's new technology coming up. So, India has been trying to do so and especially after the pandemic, there have been new companies who have come into picture, who have realized the need of putting these solutions where people just get to see the doctor uh, without really visiting them. But we still have a very long way to go. And... Uh, 
Apart from that, it's also been researched and reported that India has one of the highest rates of out-of-pocket expenses for healthcare services and which directly contributes and leads to a high chance of people getting into poverty. There have been several reports published where people are paying so much out of their pocket for their healthcare and there's so much healthcare expenditure but at the end of the day they do not have enough money to sustain themselves and uh, furthermore telemedicine can help to reduce that financial burden again there have been studies which show that there is always a chance of cost saving occurrence as a result of treatments decreased average cost right and telemedicine and telehealth solutions are working towards making treatments available to people in the need the most at much lower cost than usual. And also one of the other thing is systems. Telemedicine is not only about the exchange of information between the doctor and the patient. It's also about sharing of information related to a patient's history of a particular disease or, or the data that if probably a person X has visited some other doctor in the Past, all of that data can be put into the system and the other practitioners who are overseeing the current patient, they can actually know what kind of medicines were used previously, what kind of treatments has the patient been under through in the past. And all of that helps to probably give advanced solutions and advanced treatments to the patients. Physician can easily collect and exchange information through all of these patient portals. There are a lot of new patient portals coming in where of course, these portals are now working to solve the privacy issue. There are things done to improve these portals. But all of these things help to, first of all, improve the process, reduce the time, reduce the energy and the cost on the side of both the patient and the doctor, and ultimately make the healthcare services more accessible to the people who need it the most in the most vital times and towards the overall goal of improving health outcomes for the population at large in India. Thanks, Manik. That's a highly informative answer. And to give our listeners some time to process that load of information, we'll pause for a commercial break now. Okay, welcome back, everyone. So, Manik, the next question I had for you is on the growth of telemedicine. So what are the barriers to growth of telemedicine in developing nations? Okay, good question, Rohan. There are more than one barriers to the growth of telemedicine uh, in India and other developing countries. So it's been quite some time that developed countries have adopted alternative tools and technologies to leverage the supply of healthcare. But still in them, in those countries as well, quality and cost of healthcare is still an issue and they're still trying to get more of telemedicine solutions. In developing nations, what's been the case is like they have, they have adopted all of these technologies to reduce the overall cost and to overall improve the quality of healthcare. And telemedicine for them has emerged as a new hope, but they have done it in a hurry without proper planning and strategizing the implementation of telemedicine in their respective countries and that's why despite of more than two decades of adapting telemedicines a lot of the developing and lower income nations have not yet achieved a significant success in reducing the overall cost and to improve the access of care for the population right so one of the barriers is of course the policy barriers for any smooth functioning of any kind of system we know that we need rigid and definite policies and procedures set up at the most local level to the most national level and these defined rules and procedures and probably protocols can help run any kind of system in this case a telemedicine system run smoothly and safely to ensure that population receives a quality healthcare services in many developing nations and also in India there has been no standardized policy to how to uniformize and like probably you know, implement telemedicine solutions, which leads to confusion and for designing services, for implementing those services and to probably for people also. And of course, there's a for lack of information. And that's why people, even people don't know about the availability of such solutions in the market. Right. And there's of course, there is lack of formal organization structure to deliver these services as well. Even if we have some kind of rules, put in place, even if we have some kind of services into place, there is no structure to deliver all of these services in most developing nations. 
and it needs collaboration with a lot of stakeholders at each level in every healthcare delivery system because of lack of collaboration between the stakeholders and and of course with the absence of specific policy uh, it's been tough and it's become actually a bottleneck for development of telemedicine even so we know it's been more than more than 20 22 it's close to 25 years that telemedicine has now come to india but we hardly use it and there are only specific districts where there have been some organizations or particular hospital who's been working on telemedicine so we haven't been able to done that because of lack of policy policies and lack of also organizational structure which also leads to my other point that there is also absence of accreditation and regulatory bodies so there are no regulatory bodies in a lot of developing nations who standardize this these practices of or delivering of healthier services through the use of modern technology and because of this absence that creates a feeling of fear both amongst the users and as well as the providers what it automatically does is it leaves the solutions which are into place which are just to be implemented into isolation and so now i think apart from the policy and apart from the structure there's also a need for the medical councils and of course other health councils should take the responsibility to probably regulate the delivery of these services right so and that's one thing and uh, another very important thing that i should have mentioned it in the beginning technology in itself has become a barrier in development of telemedicine in a lot of developing nations there is a high cost of replacing the older technology which they have been using for decades at affordable prices with new stakeholders right and so there has been failure of telemedicine network in a lot of developing nations because they really don't have solutions to how to replace the entire kind of services through modern technology and one of these examples that we can take from india is the failure of telemedicine network in the state of madhya pradesh where in uh, isro that is indian space research organization sponsored equipment like camera there was there were television sets and there were other uh, softwares which were not utilized in a long time and they had become outdated and non functional because people just didn't know how to replace the older technology with the newer one also there was nothing of to repair and replacement of the newer one so there is lack of willingness also towards from the side of the people and from the medical professionals itself to take up that responsibility to ensure that we move towards a smoother system where healthcare or telemedicine and solutions are easily deliverable so all of this has led to in a lot of countries uh, it's led to the whole telemedicine network collapsing in many situations so that's one other hurdle and i think another important factor that there has been which has acted as a barrier is there is the lack of doctors physicians nurses technicians all of these people who are really required to run the system in the first place we do not have infrastructure and ict technology that's one thing but we do not even have enough human resources to run those services and deliver those to people so i think we need more trained professionals who are trained in probably medicine and then we can because we need doctors at the hospital itself in the first place that's more important we do not have enough india and other developing nations is not producing enough practitioners to probably get into telemedicine services right now yeah thanks mike you raised some pertinent points there but let's put you in the driver's seat for now and ask you this question what do you think are the essential steps to ensure telemedicine and telehealth reaches millions of people in this country there is no one shoe fits all size approach that we can adopt to ensure that telemedicine reaches everyone but there are multiple things that we can do to ensure that the spread and the growth of telemedicine services is quicker and the acceptance of telemedicine is quicker because now we really know that people are not looking forward and like i know so many people who would want to just go to a doctor rather than speaking to them through a virtual platform right so there's lack of acceptance so all of these things also come into play so we have to take some steps to ensure that everything runs and impl- it's the implementation is smooth so one of the thing is to identify and then to address the security risks so when healthcare services are provided with the help of technology we know there are security issues which 
which can become very very complex and there is a so possibility of both actually intentional and unintentional data breach and that's why there's a lack of trust to build trust of patients uh, managing privacy issues is very very important and health and other data of patients and their probably their family members needs to be protected at all times and that's why appropriate steps should be taken in this direction we really just not need the policy and the services in the place we also have to ensure that these things are put into place after the risks have been addressed because the lack of trust will automatically just lead to the inability of these telehealth systems in the country to expand in different geographical locations and improve the accessibility quality and effectiveness of healthcare i would want to repeat the point that i mentioned again people in india are still actually not of going towards hospitals and availing healthcare services more than they should actually people still are preferring home remedies home based treatments they have other we of course know that they i don't want to really highlight that things that have happened during the pandemic but we know people are still going towards traditional forms of medicine they are actually visiting traditional healers so we have to remove that and we have to build the trust amongst the people for the new technology and the first step in that direction is to probably is a comprehensive set of privacy and security standards and regulations for health data that is collected stored and shared electronically and of course and further steps should have to be taken to ensure that there's a workforce compliance okay and uh, the other thing that india can do is and that's the question that a lot of people raise against telemedicine in the first place is is telemedicine equitable there's always this fear right with telehealth services that they uh, keep some groups at disadvantage due to its complex nature and of course involvement of several resources in the country where we do not have enough internet services how do we ensure that telemedicine reaches everyone people do not have phones and of course we also know that a lot of social issues come into picture we know that women and a lot of elderly population do not have phones a lot of people cannot afford these services so we have to improve on that and hence to start with it is important to fund and implement programs projects to provide internet connected or telephone connected services and broadband access even in the most remotest regions of the country and uh, apart from it it's also important to invest more training of health human resources so that they develop the skill set required and improve on their communication and also their flexibility skills right in the current education system we do not teach doctors how to treat people through the telecommunication services right and um, that's why but future med- medical practitioners should be exposed to learning as basic as probably camera etiquette telephone etiquette a uh, web based healthcare services we need to train the practitioners in, de- in that direction and that's how we'll only be able to make more telemedicine more equitable digital literacy with focus on creating programs for different patient groups for example if we are probably trying to implement a health program or just creating a health awareness program for some women from a particular community from uh, one of the most remote regions in the country we have to have that kind of literacy how to communicate with them so all of these things will only make telling health uh, appropriate for all and not just for some specific people of the country and um, of course we need to invest more on logistics there is a need for logistical improvements the major issue of course has been connectivity there are far too many people who are left behind and continue to live in scarce resources all uh, patients and doctors have to have sufficient hardware and software into place of course there should be digital imaging technology peripherals and all of these things we don't really give importance to all of it but these really form the backbone of telemedicine and telehealth in any country so all of these in addition a successful telehealth infrastructure can only be scaled once we have internet things we have integrations put into place and then only the trend will grow and apart from that we have to make one of the most important things is to create these awareness programs about the availability of telehealth services right now a lot a large scale of population in the country is not aware about the services even if they have 
in the near locations because we only talk about urban locations in telehealth services but a lot of good ngos and good hospitals are working and implementing telehealth services in the most rural and remote regions of the country so we have to create awareness programs and of course there are different there is a need for different engagement of different stakeholders to uh, put things into place but we have to ensure that telehealth services are here to stay and it represents a valuable opportunity currently for our country to redesign its health services models right we haven't done it in the past and we have seen what happened to us during the two years of the pandemic and back to 3 now 3 years of the pandemic i really think we still haven't learned a lot from it so the country is still new to the technology the country is actually still also new to the what works best for its own population and still and since that we are still at a very early stage this is the right time for policy makers to take up that approach and make the best use of availability of new technology and then uh, of course uh, work towards healthcare access to everyone in the country yeah thanks mike i think those are some extremely sensible interventions that you're suggesting here and i hope that our authorities do pick up on this and make some of these implementations that you mentioned thanks for joining us today it has been a highly insightful episode and a highly insightful session for me to to learn about telemedicine thanks i hope our listeners also enjoyed that if you liked our show don't forget to check out other interesting podcasts on the ivm network You can tune into them on the IVM podcast app ivmpodcast.com or wherever you listen to your podcasts. You can also follow IVM on social media. The handle is at IVM Podcasts on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram. And hey, if you'd like to dive into Takshashila's research on technology, strategy and economic affairs, check us out at our Twitter handle at @takshashila_inst or our website takshashila.org.in.